All right. Uh, today we're going to start uh, the first lecture of chapter number uh, five and the learning uh, goals for today. The first one is use in Newton's first uh, law of bodies in equilibrium. The second is to apply in Newton's second law for accelerating bodies. So in this first section, we're going to look at using Newton's first law, which we say particles in equilibrium. Now in chapter number four, we talked about Newton's first law, and we said that the summation of forces is equal to zero, meaning the body is at rest or moving with constant velocity. And we said this equivalent to saying that the net force is equal to zero and then the second law summation of the forces is equal to m a or f net is equal to m a and then the third law to every action there is equal and opposite reaction and mathematically we can say that f a b should equal to minus f b a that means f a b the force of A exerted on B, and if B A, that means the force of B exerted on A. So, if we have a body in equilibrium, it means that it is at rest, or it's moving with constant velocity in an inertial frame of reference. So, how are you going to apply in Newton's uh, first law to bodies in equilibrium. Uh, we're going to follow this problem solving strategy. The first one is to draw a free body diagram, and we can abbreviate this as FBD. The second, it shows a set of coordinate axes for that body. We're going to look at motion here in two dimensions. And in two dimension, we can use X and Y axis. And of course, they have to be perpendicular to each other. Then once we set the axis, we look if the forces along the X are OK, the forces along the Y are OK. But if the forces make an angle with the X axis or the Y axis, then in that case, we have to look at the component for each uh, force along each axis. Okay, we can use different axes for each object in the system. Then we set the summation of the forces equal to zero. Uh, uh, summation of the forces along the x-axis equal to zero, and we set the y component of the net force along the y-axis equal to zero. Now we're going to repeat this for each body in the system. If the system contains two or three, four bodies, we're going to do that for each one. And then we make sure that you have as many equations as the number of unknown quantities. You all know that if you uh, have two unknowns, you need two equations, three unknowns, you need three equations. So you make sure that you get enough equation that can help you to solve for the unknowns that you are after. And then solve what? Solve the equation. So that's the stretch. Let's apply that to some examples here. And we're going to look at the first example. And the first example here tells you a gymnast with mass 50 kg suspends herself by a rope shown in the figure. And they ask, what is the weight, the gymnast's weight? And then what is the tension in the rope? Now, if we follow our strategy, the first thing that we're going to do is a free body diagram. And I told you, you identify the forces from the center of the mass. So looking at the gymnast that we have there, and we go through the center of the mass. So we have the weight, which should equal to mg, is basically pointing down toward the center of the earth and i told you this is usually 
the uh, vertical or the normal to the surface of the earth wherever you are or where the object is and then the tension in the cable in this case is acting up so that's the first stage we identify the forces the second is to choose x-axis where is the x and where is the y now the most logical x-axis for us in this case it's two-dimensional so the x-axis will be this way and the y-axis will be that way and we look the weight is along the y-axis negative y-axis the tension is along the positive y-axis along the x-axis we don't have any forces so there are no forces that make angles with either the x or the y so we do not have to work out any components here and we move on now in the first question they ask us about the weight in the last lecture we talked about the difference between mass and weight and we said the weight should equal to mg so the mass that we're given is 50 kilograms g is 9.8 meters per second squared and that basically gives you 4490 uh, newtons that's the weight of the gymnast there then the second they ask us about the tension in the rope now the only forces that we see are acting along the y and remember in our strategy we said that you take the summation of along the x and in this case the gymnast is stationary it's not moving so it's equal to zero and the summation of fy is equal to zero we don't have anything along the x and the only thing that we have is along the y so the summation of the force along the y is equal to zero now the tension is acting along the positive y-axis weight is along the negative so it's t minus w equals zero you can take this to the other side so you have the tension equal to the weight which equals 490 newtons any questions so far is this clear let's take another example uh, and maybe we're going to deal with uh, two points where we're going to look at three body diagrams a car engine with weight w hanged by chains as shown find the tension in each chain in terms of the weight w so we have an engine here it's hung by chain and then these chain connect to one point and one chain is connected this way the other chain is connected the other way so these chains are uh, these uh, chains are different so in this case here we're going to look at the engine and from the center of the mass of the engine we're going to draw the forces and we can see that the weight is acting down the tension in the first chain here and we can call it t1 is acting up and of course it's stationary the appropriate x-axis here we choose the positive x-axis to the right the positive y-axis perpendicular to it now from this one we can work out the value of t1 so as we always say that we take the fx equal to zero fy is equal to zero but in this case i don't have any forces in the x direction the only forces are in the y and that's why we say the summation of the forces along the y is equal to zero t1 which is acting up positive w acting down negative minus w equal to zero you can take this to the other side so t1 here equals w1 now i can come to this point here and do a free body diagram on this point as well because there are forces acting on this point and when i look at this i see three chains and i told you a chain a rope a cable uh, string uh, 
a wire, all of these basically pull. They do not push. So for example, on the engine here, T1 is pulling up. But on this point here, T1 is pulling down. So you have to be careful with that. So when I look at this point here, I have T1 is pulling down. T2 will be pulling toward the wall. And T3 here will be pulling toward the ceiling. So these are my tensions. The second thing, it should choose where is my X and where is my Y. So this is the appropriate choice here. This is the positive X axis. This is the positive Y axis. I look at my forces. T1 is along the negative Y axis in this case. T2 is along the negative uh, X axis, but T3 makes an angle of 60 degrees. Now, uh, the angle is 60 degrees here. So if you make your X axis this way and Y axis that way, now you know that if this angle is 60 degrees, this angle here is also going to be 60 degrees. Simple trigonometry. Now, again, in this situation, I have both. I have the summation of the X is equal to zero and the summation of the Y is equal to zero. If I look at the Y, then this uh, uh, y3, uh, it will have a t3y, and it will have a t3, uh, three, uh, this is x, 3yx, and this is 3t3y. Now, the x component here, you can see that it's the adjacent to the x-axis. So in this case, the T3x will be T3 cosine 60 degrees. And the T3, which is the opposite here, the T3y. So T3y will equal to T3 sine 60 degrees. So if I look along the y, I will have the y component of T3 up minus T1, and that should equal to 0. Now, T1 is equal to uh, W, the weight, as we did from here. And T3y will equal to T3 sine 60. So T3 sine 60 minus W equal to 0. So T3 here will equal to the weight. You can take this to the other side, divided by sine 60. And sine 60, it is uh, root 3 over 2. So W divided by root 3 by 2, which will give you, you can take 2 to the denominator. So you get 2 uh, W divided by root 3. And that's T3 now. Now, along the x-axis for this point here, you have the x component of T3 going positive this way, and T2 is going negative equals to 0. Now, you want to find out T2, so you can take T2 to the other side, it will be positive, and T2 will equal to T3 cosine 60. But you already know that T3 equals uh, 2w over square root uh, 3. But cosine 60 is equal to 1 half. So the 2 will cancel the uh, uh, the half. And the 2 here will cancel the 2. And you get w over square root of 3. So we have obtained t1, uh, t3, and t uh, two in this situation. Is this clear how we... Uh... Yes, this point here where the three uh, tensions are connecting, it has no mass. You only see the effect of these pulling on them. Any other questions? Any other questions?
Now, we can look at another example here. And this example here, you have 1,130 kg car is held in place by a light cable on a very smooth frictionless ram as shown. The cable makes an angle of 31 degrees above the surface of the ram and the ram itself uh, rises at 25 uh, degrees above the horizontal. Draw a free body diagram. Find the tension in the cable. How hard does the surface of the ram push on the car? And that's the normal force. Now, if we follow our strategy, the first thing is from the center of the mass, and we're going to look at the forces. Now, the forces that we see here is the weight, which is pulling toward the center of the earth, and the normal force, which is normal to the surface at 90 degrees. So it will be this way, and the weight will be down this way. And of course, the tension in the cable will be that way, making an angle of 31 degrees. That's your free body diagram. The next thing is to choose X and Y. And it's always advisable when you have an incline, take this being your X axis and take this as being your Y. In this case, we're going to take this as positive X axis because it's pulling this way up. So now you're going to look uh, at the forces. So again, this is your uh, way, uh, normal force, weight, and the tension. Now, the incline makes an angle of, let's say, theta here, which is in this case, it's 25 degrees. Now, along the normal force is along the positive y-axis. The tension makes an angle of 31 degrees with the positive x-axis. So I will have here T uh, x, and I will have here also T y, because it will be pulling. This tension will have an x component this way, a y component up. And we know in this case, since this angle is 31 degrees, so the T x in this case will equal to T cosine 31 degrees, and the Ty will be T sine 31 degrees. Now, I look at the weight. That's your y-axis, and the weight is making an angle theta here. So what is this angle here? And I want to tell you that you can always follow this as a rule. Okay. Now, if you look in this situation here, this angle here is 90 degrees. And this angle here is theta, which is the angle of the incline. So let's call this angle here beta. And you know, when you have a triangle, the total angles are 180 degrees. So you can say that beta plus Theta plus 90 degrees should equal to 180 degrees. So you can take this to the other side, and you can say that beta plus theta is equal to 90 degrees, because 180 minus 90 degrees will give you 90 degrees. Now, if you look at this angle here, it will be 90 degrees. And this angle is going to equal to uh, beta plus theta as well. And since this angle here is beta, then this angle here is also going to equal to what? Equal to theta. So in the case that we have here, that we did, if I want to look at 25, so it is beta plus 25 degrees plus 90 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. 
So beta here will equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 25 degrees, and that will give you 65 degrees. That's your beta. Well, you know that this angle here, which is beta plus theta, should equal to 90 degrees. So if you have uh, 65 plus theta, which we don't know, should equal to 90 degrees. That means theta should equal 25 degrees because you can take this to the other side. So whenever you have an incline, which makes an angle theta with the uh, horizontal surface, when you draw your x-axis and you make the y-axis normal to the incline, the angle between the weight and the y-axis is going to be the same angle as the incline. Is this point clear? So in this case here, if you look at the weight, the weight will have a uh, y component this way, and it will have an x component this way, because the weight is coming down. So that's the y, and that's the x. So now, if I apply uh, Newton's first law, since the object is in equilibrium along the x, the summation of the forces is equal to zero. Now, we choose here where is the positive x-axis, where is the uh, negative x-axis. Now, you can basically uh, take the positive x-axis to be, as we drawn here, it's up there. So it would be the Tx minus the weight. So we have the Tx here minus the weight. X is equal to 0. And the Tx should equal to T cosine 31. So T cosine 31 degrees minus... Now, the weight, it should be the uh, x component. Now, the x component here is going to be the opposite. So it will be w sine theta. So if you look at your w y here, w y, since the y is adjacent to theta here, so it will be w cosine theta. And if you look at the y-x, it will be w sine theta. You're always, uh, probably if you remember from chapter number one, we always say the x component with cosine and the y component is with a sine. But you see here the y component with a cosine <coughs> and the x component with a sine. We look at the geometry that we have here. The y component is the adjacent. So it's with sine. And the x component is the opposite, which is with a sine. So here, what we have is the x component of the tension, which is T cosine 31, minus the x component of the weight, which is uh, W sine theta is equal to 0. So T cosine 31 minus uh, W, you know, it's equal to M. G and M is equal to 1130, G is equal to 9.8 times sine 25 equals to zero. So you can take this to the other side. So T will equal to 1130 times 9.8 times sine 25 over cosine 31, and that gives you 5460 newtons. So that's basically the tension in the cable. In part B, they ask us how hard the uh, surface of the incline is pushing on the car, which is the normal force. So if I look at the Y, the summation of the forces in the Y should equal to zero. Now along the Y, the Y component of the tension is up. The normal force is up minus the Y component of the tension down. So you can take this one and this one to the other side. So the normal force will equal to the y component of the weight minus uh, the 
uh, y component of the tension. The y component of the weight is mg cosine theta, and the y component for the tension is T sine 31 degrees. Now you can put in uh, for M is 1130 times 9.8 cosine 25 degrees, and that's the angle of the incline. And this is the tension is 5460 times sine 31 degrees, and that gives you uh, 7224.3 in newtons, and that's the normal force here. In the last lecture, I told you you have to be careful. Many will always think that the normal force and the weight are action reaction. I told you that's the wrong way of looking at that. And some, they always think that the normal force should equal to the weight. Now, in this situation here, the normal force is not even equal to the Y component of the weight because we have to include in the Y component of the tension. And that's how you calculate the normal force. Later, when we deal with the friction, we need to uh, work on how we obtain the normal force. Is this example clear? What you take from here, always, when you have an incline, the angle that the incline makes with the horizontal, it's going to be the same angle that the weight makes with the uh, y-axis, which is normal or perpendicular to the uh, to the incline. Okay. And I told you that when you look at triangle like this, now the weight here makes an angle 90 degrees. This is theta. So you look at this angle here between the incline and the weight. You know that in a triangle, the angle, total angle is 180 degrees. So if we say that this angle here is beta, so it is beta plus theta plus 90 degrees should equal to 180 degrees. In the situation that we have here, theta is 25. So beta plus 25 plus 90 is 180. That gives you beta as 65 degrees. Now the angle between the incline and the y-axis is 90 degrees. And since this angle here is 65, this angle here is going to equal to 25 degrees. So in general, when you have a situation like this, the angle, uh, the, the angle between the weight and the y-axis, which is normal to your incline, it's going to be the same angle that the incline makes. Is this clear? And probably we're going to use that in this example as well. You have a block on a cart with steel wheels. Total weight W1 is pulled uphill on a steel rails by a filled bucket weight W2 that descends vertically. How must the weight W1 and W2 related in order for the system to move with constant speed. So they gave you here a condition. And the condition is they want this system to move with constant speed. Now, you cannot say constant velocity because uh, this one will be moving this way and this one will be moving the other way. So they have different directions. But the magnitude here and here is the same. And that's why we say we can say that they move with constant speed. That's why we say here the speed of the bucket is equal to the speed of the cart. It's a system. And of course, they will have the same acceleration. But since we are moving with constant speed, then the acceleration is going to equal to zero, meaning that the net force is equal to zero. That's a situation where. Uh, we can apply a Newton's first law for the case when the speed is constant. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to do a free body diagram. And you always do that from the center of the mass. 
So for the bucket, you're going to go from the center of the mass and you draw W2 and up is T. Now in this case here, the pulley is frictionless. So the cable slides on this pulley. It's not rotating the pulley. So in this case, the tension is the same on both sides in magnitude, but the tension always pulls. So in this case, the tension is up. In this case, the tension is pulling that way. Now we come to the cart here. The normal force is normal to the surface. Tension is pulling this way along the incline. Weight is down. Now you have to choose where is your X and where is your Y. X and Y are different for each part of the system, object in the system. So for this one here, I'm going to use my X axis this way and my Y axis to be this way. For this one, I'm going to put my X axis to be this way and the Y axis perpendicular to it. So in this case, you can look at the Y axis being this way. So this angle here, it's going to be 15 degrees, as we discussed previously. So when you look at that, your weight now has uh, W1 has a Y component, which is down this way. And it has an X component, which is basically this way. And of course, if you look at the angle that it makes and Y, so you can say that Y 1X, because it is the opposite, it will be W sine 15 degrees. And the W 1Y will be W cosine 15 degrees, because it's adjacent to it, adjacent to the angle. So now for the bucket here, if I look at the summation of the force along the Y. Now, it's always advisable to take the positive axis along the motion. So for example, in this situation here, that you can take that the positive y axis is basically down because that's the motion. This will make the acceleration for you positive. It's relative, by the way. It doesn't matter. The equation will work out at the end. So if we do that, then we're going to say w2 minus t and should equal to zero because there is no motion. And even if you if you choose your y axis to be up and the x-axis this way, you will say that it is t minus w2, which is equal to 0, which is also equivalent to w2 minus t is equal to 0. But it's always, in this textbooks, they advise you to make the positive x-axis along the motion. And since this is descending down, then the positive y-axis can be chosen to be down. Either way, the equations will work for you. But if you are if you want to keep with things, even in this situation, you can make your y-axis up and the negative y-axis down. But when there is acceleration, if you make this case, then you're going to say that the acceleration is negative, is moving down. Maybe we'll deal with it later. Okay. So in this situation here, you have w2 minus t is equal to 0. That means the tension is equal to the weight 2. We're done. Now we go to the cart. The cart is moving along the x-axis. So along the x-axis, and that's the positive x-axis here, it will be the tension minus the x component of the weight. And the x component of the weight, we said it is uh, w sine 15 degrees is equal to 0. And this is equation two, and this is equation one now. 
Now you can either substitute for T here equal to W2. So we have here W2 minus W1 sine 15 is equal to zero, meaning W2 will equal to W1 sine 15, or you can divide by W1, so it's W2 divide W1, it's equal to sine 15 degrees. Now, in this situation here, if the ratio between W2 and W1 is equal to sine 15 degrees, this will ensure that the system will be moving with constant speed. Now, we did not look at the Y component for the cart here because they did not ask us how hard the uh, incline is pushing on the cart, and that requires that we have to get the normal force or later when we deal with the friction and friction is always related to the normal force we have to calculate the, the normal force but in this case we there is no need for that the only need is basically what is the ratio to keep the system moving with constant speed is this clear any question on this good now we're going to look in the situation where we have dynamics, things are moving, okay? And in that case, we're going to use Newton's second law. In Newton's second law in two dimension, okay, you can do that in three dimension as well. You have the X component of the net force equals MAX. And the net component of the uh, force or the total force should equal to MAY. But it is the same strategy. You're going to draw a free body diagram. You choose a coordinate set. That means X. And they say here, for each body, doesn't have to be the same for all of them. And we dealt with example before that, when we have the car and the bucket. For each, you can have your x-axis differently because you will basically produce equations and you can work with these equations. And they say the positive axis, the same as the acceleration of the motion. And that's what I tried to tell you in the previous example. If it's descending down, that means the acceleration is down. Maybe they advise you here to make the positive y-axis along that direction. In this case, they tell you choose the positive x-axis to be in the direction of the motion. Now, once you set your x-axis, you find components, x and y. And once you do that, you look at your summation of fx, but in this case, it's not 0, it's equal to max. And you look at your uh, y component, which is equal to may. And usually the A, Y, or the Y component is perpendicular to the X component. And if the motion is along the positive X axis, that means along the Y, the acceleration is going to be zero. And then you basically figure out the equations. You add all of these equations and then solve the equations. So that's the idea. Now. Let's take some examples to illustrate this. A toboggan loaded with students, total weight W, slides down friction free. That means frictionless. Slope, what is its acceleration? So here the uh, toboggan makes an angle alpha, and you have students loaded in it, and they ask about the acceleration, always from the center of the mass and you do your free body diagram, the weight is down, the normal force is up, that's it, you're done. There is no friction, so that's basically, now they tell you here to choose the positive x-axis or the positive y-axis, depending on the situation, to be along the motion. Since this is moving down, this is the choice of the positive x-axis here. Perpendicular to it is the positive y-axis. Now, the normal force is along the positive y-axis. 
but the weight here makes an angle with the uh, y axis and i told you if the incline makes an angle alpha then this angle here is going to be alpha now the weight is this way well meaning here that the weight will have a y component this way and it will have an x component that way now your y component of the weight will be w cosine alpha because it's uh, this is the y component and it's the adjacent to the angle alpha the x component will be the opposite to that and that's why we said that the wx here will equal to the weight sine alpha so if i look at my forces along the x-axis so the summation of the force along the x is equal to max and the only force that i see along the x-axis is the x component of the weight which is wx should equal to max so ax here will equal to the x component of the weight divided by the mass and the x component is the weight sine alpha and you know that the weight is equal to mg so it is mg sine alpha divided by m you cancel the m with the m and you get your ax as a g sine alpha and that's the acceleration of the system we can do the y as well you can do the y here and you say the summation of the y will equal to the uh, y component of the weight uh, sorry it will equal the normal force of the weight up minus the y component of the weight down should equal to m a y but it's moving this way along the y there is no motion so this is equal to zero here and in this case you will have the normal force equals the y component of the weight which should equal to m g uh, cosine alpha but in this question, they did not ask us how hard is the incline is pushing on the toboggan. And also, we don't have a friction later on when we deal with friction. We need to find out the normal force, but you can do that for completeness here if you want to do that. Is this clear? Any question on this? Let's take here an interesting example. And this is basically when we talk about apparent weight in accelerating elevator. Remember, in the last lecture, I told you the difference between mass and weight. Mass and mass is uh, inertial property of the characterization of the object. So it's not going to change. But the weight, which is the force, okay, this is going to change. So they tell you here what happens if you are in an elevator. And the floor of the elevator, you have a scale, and the lady here is standing on the scale. So what would be the reading of the scale if the elevator is accelerating up, or if the, uh, the elevator is accelerating down, or if it's moving with constant speed? Now, whenever you get in an elevator and you want to go up, you will start from rest. To move, you need to get some uh, speed. So you have to accelerate up. Now, if you get an elevator and you want to come down, you start from rest. So you have to accelerate downwards. But if the journey is longer and you may want to maintain a constant speed, and this is what the cables basically can provide or uh, get this effect. So now, Let's look at the situation uh, for the lady here, and we do a free body diagram from the center of the mass. The weight is down, and the normal force is up, and you're moving up. So you can choose your x-axis here. This is your x-axis, and that should be the positive y-axis because you're moving up. Now, along the x-axis, you really don't have any forces here. And we don't need anything from the x-axis for this problem here. So along the y-axis, it should equal to m a y. So 
along the positive y-axis, normal force minus wave should equal to ma. You can take this the other side. So the normal force will equal to the weight plus ma. And you know that the weight is equal to mg. So you can take m as a common factor. And you have m is equal to g plus a. And that's greater than the weight. So the scale in this case is reading the normal force. And this is what we call the apparent weight now. Your weight seems to be uh, higher if you are accelerating uh, upward. Is this point clear? Now, what happens if you're accelerating downwards? And if you are accelerating downwards, you still have the same situation. The uh, weight is pointing down. The normal force is up. But your accelerating is down. Uh, there is no tension here. The tension is in the cable. But in this situation here, they want you to concentrate on the lady. And the lady is on the scale. So the lady pushes down with her weight on the scale and the scale pushes up with the normal force now the tension is in the cable there that's another thing we can look at the tension okay and it will be the same way as well the tension will be higher than the weight in that case is this clear so now if i want to look at this Along the X, I don't have anything, so I can choose my X axis. Now, the motion, by the way, it is down. So if we want to keep with giving the positive uh, acceleration along the uh, direction of motion, so we can take this as being the positive Y axis. So in this case here, we can say that it is the weight minus the normal force should equal to ma because we chose the positive motion to be down. And this will give us this equation here. Or you can say, well, I can take my x-axis to this day and the positive y-axis up. So in this case, it is the normal force up minus the weight down. But my acceleration now, it has to be negative because you chose this to be the positive, but you're going down. So either way, it will work for you. So in this case here, you can take the normal force to the other side and you say uh, the weight. So you get the normal force equal the weight minus ma. In this situation here, it's the same way. If you take the weight to the other side, then you multiply by a minus, you will get the same thing. So now you know that the weight should equal to mg. So in this case here, you will have mg minus ma, which is m times g minus a. Okay. And that, of course, less than the weight, where the weight is equal to mg. So if you're accelerating down, the reading on the scale will be less than the actual weight. Now, just for the sake of the argument here, the cable in the elevator is cut, then the elevator will be accelerating down with a G. And if the acceleration is equal to G, then a G minus a G will equal to zero. In that case, the scale will read zero and your weight will be zero. Your mass is not zero, but your weight will be zero. And this is what you, uh, I mean, the apparent weight in, in this, it will be zero. So that's why, for example, if you look at movies and when the elevator is uh, basically, the cables are cut and the elevator is uh, falling down, you see the person inside the elevator as if he or she is in the air. It's an experience of weightlessness, but this is happens because the elevator is falling down with 
uh, the acceleration of a gravity as well. Now, in the third uh, situation, they tell you what happens if you're coming down with a constant speed, or you can also go up with constant speed if you can maintain that. Now, in that situation, you can choose your x-axis, y-axis, but in both of these, the acceleration is equal to zero. So you can say that the uh, normal uh, force minus the weight should equal to zero, or you can say the weight minus the normal force since you're going down, and that's the positive y uh, direction for your motion. It's equivalent. But in any case, the normal force will equal, the weight will equal to mg, and that's exactly your weight. So this is the reading on the scale. If you're inside an elevator, you can apply this to the elevator by, by, as well, and you can look at the tension. So the tension in the cable will be higher than the weight when you're accelerating up. And the tension will be less than the weight if you're accelerating down. And the tension is going to equal to the weight if you're moving with constant speed. Is this clear? Is this clear? Let's deal with a system here. And we've seen something similar in the last lecture as well when we applied in Newton's uh, third law. What you have here you have a tray and in front of the tray you have a milk carton that you're pushing with your tray and they ask you here the acceleration of the tray and the carton so the acceleration of the system <coughs> and then they ask the horizontal force that the tray exerts on the carton now you have two objects here so you can do free body diagram for each. Now, remember, uh, you always say that this is the positive x-axis. This is always the positive uh, y-axis. But since the motion in this direction, and you can always choose the positive x-axis to be along the motion, and that's why we put here the x-axis, positive x-axis along the motion, in order to say that in this direction, we don't have to put a minus sign for the acceleration. We'll leave the acceleration as positive. Things will work out at the end. It's equations. You have both sides of the equations. So now, when you look at this, you have the normal force, and we say here NC, and C here stands for carton, the subscript, and WC here, and C here stands for carton, so the weight is down. On the carton, the normal force is up, the weight, of the carton is down. There is no friction in this situation that we're going to deal with, but we're going to deal with the force that the carton feel, and that force is coming from the tray. And that's why we say that it's the force of the tray on the carton. That's what the carton basically feels. When we look at the tray, the tray has W T here, and T here stands for the tray is coming toward the center of the Earth. And NT, which is the normal force, and this is the normal force that's coming from the supporting surface and it's pushing up. And there is an applied force, and the applied force here is along our positive x-axis because we choose the positive x-axis to be this way. Of course, there is a carton in front of it, and the carton by Newton's third law will have an effect on it. And that's why we say here there is a force which is the force of the carton on the tray. And that's the free body diagram for the tray. Now, this is a system. And this system will move with the same acceleration. That's why we say the acceleration of the system here is equal to A, which is equal to the acceleration of the tray, which is equal to the uh, uh, acceleration of the carton as well. So if we look at the uh, summation, of the force along the x-axis. And if we do that for the system, it should equal the mass of the system times the acceleration of the system. Now, for the system here, along the x-axis, I have the FTC, 
pushing this way. I have the applied force, which is pushing this way. And I have minus FCT, which is pushing the other way. That should equal the mass of the system, which is the mass of the carton plus the mass of the tray times the acceleration. Now, FTC and FCT, they're equal in magnitude. Okay. So they cancel each other here. So what you end up with F is equal to MC plus MT is equal to A. Your F here is equal to 9 newtons. Mass MC is 0.5. One, uh, M1 is 1 times uh, the acceleration. So you get basically 9 divided 1.5. And the acceleration here will equal to 6 meters per second squared. So that's part A where we got the acceleration of the system base, which is for the tray and for the uh, carton as well. B, we want to look at the force that is exerted on the, uh, the carton. And in this case, uh, if we look at the summation of the force on the carton, we only have the FTC. Uh, and this FTC should equal to M, uh, A, M, C uh, times the acceleration. Okay. And that basically, the FTC here will be 0 0.5 times 6, which is equal to 3 newtons. Is this clear of how we did this problem here? Let's deal with another example. This example here, you have M1 and M2. M1 is an air track. It's on a glider, so there is no friction. It's connected by a cable to mass 2. So the system would be basically moving down with acceleration. And the system on this side will be moving this way. Uh, they ask us here, find the acceleration and, of course, the tension. Okay. So we have two different objects in the system. So for M1, I have the weight, which is uh, pushing down. I have the normal one here, which is pushing up. And I have the tension that's in the cable. On M2 here, I have the weight, which is pulling down. I don't want you to make the mistake here and put a normal force. There is no supporting surface here. Okay, You only put a normal force when there is a supporting surface. Okay. And then you have what? You have the tension, which is pulling up. So the tension here is pulling up. The tension here is pulling in that direction. Now, we say that the pulley here is not rotating. It's frictionless. So the uh, cable slides on the pulley. That means we can say that tension is the same in both cases. If it's rotating, that will be different, and maybe we'll deal with this later. So now, since it is a system, the acceleration is going to be the same. So let me look for M1. I'm going to choose an X and Y. That's why we chose the positive X axis to be this way for M1. That will be the positive Y axis. For it, it should be M1 AX, which is the acceleration. We put one here just to indicate that it is the acceleration of mass 1. But it's a system. The acceleration is the same. <clears throat> and what we have along the X axis for mass uh, 1 is the tension. And this should equal to M1A. Along the Y, uh, you can get the N1 minus W1 is equal to 0, but you don't need to use this in, 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 in here. Now, when we look at 2, the motion is uh, down. Now, if you choose your Y axis here, to be along the motion, 
which is the advice that you're given in the strategy. Okay. Then in that case, we're going to say that W2 along the positive minus T, which is along the negative, is equal to M2A. So that's your first equation here. That's your second equation here. Now, if you choose for the second one here, if you choose your x-axis to be this way and the y-axis is up, then instead of W2 minus T equal M2A, you will have T up minus W, but now your acceleration is down. So you're going to write this as M times minus A. And you will end up getting the same thing. That's why they wanted to keep the A here with positive. They just take along the, the positive axis to be along the motion. But either way, it will work for you. Even from here, you will get the same thing. You will find that W2 minus T is equal to MA. It's the same way. Now, you have these two equations. You can uh, substitute or you can add 1 and 2. And if you add 1 and 2, this is positive here. This is negative here. They're going to cancel out. So you'll have W2 will equal to M1A plus M2A. So you can take the A as a common factor. So this will equal to M1 plus M2 times A. So your A here will equal to M2G over M1 plus M2. And that's your acceleration. Now the tension, you can get it from here, from the first equation. The tension is equal to M1A. And since you have A here, so the tension M1A will equal to M1, M2G over M1 plus M2. And that will give you your tension. Is this clear? Any question on this? Good. We're going to take a few uh, questions here, just for discussions. Okay. We already dealt with the situation, but here you tell you you are you are pushing a one kg food tray through the cafeteria in line with constant force of nine newton. As the tray move, it pushes on zero point five kg milk carton. If the food tray and the milk carton move at constant speed, that's it. Constant speed meaning. The acceleration equals to zero. And they give you this option. The tray exerts more force on the milk carton than the milk carton exerts on the tray. The tray exerts less force on the milk carton than the milk carton exists on the tray. The tray exerts as much force on the milk carton as the milk carton exerts on the tray. So which of these is the right option here? If we want to look at this. It's moving with constant speed. Acceleration is equal to zero. And you know about Newton's third law. So actually, yes, the right answer here is C. And this uh, question here. A cart weight W1 is attached by lightweight cable to bucket W2 as shown. The ram is frictionless. The pulley is frictionless and does not rotate. And I told you that can affect the tension. But in this case, if it's not rotating, it's frictionless. So we can regard the tension on the cable on both sides to be the same. When released, the cart accelerates up the ram and the bucket accelerates downward, how does the cable tension compare to W2? So that's like the case of the elevator. Okay. So what we have here, uh, the tension here and the tension here, same magnitude. So if we look at this, and especially this one here, W2 is down, tension is up. If you choose, this is the positive y-axis here. So it will be W2 minus T will equal to M. Uh, B here stands for bucket, mass 
A. So if you take the tension to the, uh, if you take this to the other side there, and then you multiply by the negative sign, so you'll find out that uh, uh, the tension in this case, okay, will be less than the weight or the uh, W2 will be greater than the tension. So if you do that here, you will find that minus T should equal to MA minus W2. T will equal to W2 minus MA. And that's why you say here, or you can take this uh, to the other side, that's why you said that the weight here is greater than the uh, tension. Okay. So what should be the right answer here? Well, the tension is going to be a greater than the weight. Remember the case of the elevator when we talked about the elevator? If you're going up, the tension will be greater than the weight. And if you are coming down, the tension will be less than the weight. And if you are uh, going with constant speed, the tension is going to equal exactly the weight. So here, your right option will be what now for the tension? It will be C. So in summary, we only uh, looked at application of Newton's first and uh, second law. Uh, when we dealt with the Newton's first law, the summation of the uh, x component of the total force should be equal to zero, and also for the y component of the total force should be equal to zero, of, or the y component of the net force should be equal to zero. When we apply Newton's second law, the you go to the root through the strategy, free body diagram, you set an x-axis, then you look components and so on. And you look at the summation of the x component of the total force should equal to max. For the y, it should be equal to may, but usually the ay is perpendicular to the x uh, axis. And if there is no motion along the y, and you choose the motion to be parallel to the x axis, that will give you the y component of the total force is equal to zero or the net the y component of the net force is equal to zero is this clear any question on this good